Hey there, it's Pete here, and I'm back to bring you all the action from day five of the World Championships. Uh, the first match I wanted to bring you was a match between USA 1 and New Zealand. Uh, both are around about the, the chase for the eighth spot, so let's see what happens in this match. And uh, I wanted to illustrate some variation in sort of preemptive styles between the two teams. Uh, so I've picked up a couple of interesting boards. This first one, uh, north here for New Zealand, uh, Gao Tislevel, um, opened two diamonds. Now, in their methods, two diamonds was like a bad week two in a major. Kind of like a multi-two uh, that you've either got hearts or spades, but no strong options and actually just worse than a normal week two. I've only got four points, but they got in there and opened two diamonds. And look at what havoc uh, ensues from here. So East with a fabulous hand starts with a double for takeout and South jumps to three hearts saying, I've got tolerance for playing in three hearts and three spades. He goes pass and North bids three spades. And now East could bid four clubs, but they opted to double again just to try and leave three no trumps as an option here. Um, if partner can bid three no trumps, fantastic. And it goes pass. South that really doesn't have much and just bids their best suit for diamonds. And this doesn't really have anywhere to go. Like four diamonds might not be a great spot. Five clubs could be a really bad spot. Um, so they just elected to pass and they ended up in four diamonds, which actually goes down. At the other table, there was a lot of action, but there was no preempt to start with. And we can see how this unfolds. So East gets to open one club and South gets to make a takeout double. Uh, West chose to respond here. Uh, they bid one spade. This was uh, saying they don't have a major. So this wasn't a natural one spade bid. North gets in and bids two spades and East made a takeout double themselves. And now West bids two no trumps. Again, this is not natural. This just says partner, you choose between the minors. And uh, North kept on going on three spades. East chose double again. I think they were trying to keep three no trumps in the picture here with the double. And it went pass. And uh, West chose four clubs. East is now making slam tries. West is kind of regretting the fact that they bid in the first spot. Uh, but eventually he bids five clubs. And five clubs is a great spot. Uh, you just lose a spade. You lose a club. And you can trump two hearts. Uh, they actually made an over trick here because uh, the spade went away. So it went heart lead. They knocked out the ace. They drew a trump. And now you can actually set up the diamonds to throw your spade away. Uh, so New Zealand actually picked up a good game swing here um, for bidding to five clubs. But I think it really comes back down to the damage dealt by the opening bid and the availability that they had uh, week, week two in a major. Um, by opening two diamonds. Uh, the next hand I wanted to bring up really illustrates the difference between their preemptive styles. Um, here, a uh, pretty routine auction that I think most people would actually have here, which was just uh, West opens two new trumps, East transferred to spades, and they stopped in three spades. Uh, now, three spades can be beaten. Um, North has to lead a heart at some stage in the, in the defense. Uh, but they were really enthused about their four spades and wanted to try and get a forcing defense going. So they started with the king of clubs. And Declara starts drawing trumps. Uh, they win the ace. And now they continue with the diamond to the ace. Now here south can still beat it if they know to switch to a, a heart. Um, and find that they can give their partner a rough or... Not so much give them a heart rough, but at least cut the entries so that they can't draw trumps effectively. Um, so a heart would beat it, but uh, they continued uh, with clubs. So three spades made at this table. At the other table, not a bid many people would really consider here, but uh, East opened two spades. Now, in their system, their description is... At favorable vulnerability, when they are not vulnerable versus vulnerable, they play hyper aggressive preamps. And I think this really illustrates what they mean by hyper aggressive. They are only promising five and they're showing zero to six points. This is how aggressive uh, their bids are. And the main thing I wanted to illustrate here is if you do things like this, 
you need a firm partnership understanding. You also need to explain it to your opponents, uh, which they did. Uh, but check out uh, West's restraint here. So it goes two spades, pass, and they have 21 points. 21. And they bid two no trumps invitational, three clubs that had a bad hand, and they're like, all right, sorry, partner, I, I bid too much. And they get to three spades, and they actually went one down because uh, uh, on the defense they win, and now they just switch to a heart. And they, this causes grief and they can't actually draw trumps here. But you got 21 points, your partner bids, and you still can't even make the part score. I just thought this was glorious. Um, but here, uh, the whole purpose of the preempts is to make life really difficult for the strong hands. And the theory is you got two opponents and one partner. So go ahead and give it a shot. But uh, not what most people would consider a two spade bid, but again, vulnerability they only do this when they're not vulnerable and the opponents are vulnerable and they have hyper aggressive preamps here um and yeah just check out the restraint there <laughs> how many of you would with 21 points would be like okay yeah three spades is enough i, I believe you partner uh the next board i wanted to highlight is a pretty interesting bidding one here um check out this south hand they've got three spades and eight diamonds and two points. Partner opens a heart and he goes pass. What do you do? Do you pass one heart? Well, here Hampson chose to bid one no trump. And the general idea behind this is over after it goes one heart, pass one no trump. If he gets an opportunity to bid diamonds later, he can say, well, I've got my six to nine points, six to nine points, but I have a weak hand with lots of diamonds and I just want to play in diamonds. Um, so rather than trying to play in a no trump, this, uh, well, rather than trying to play in a heart, they're trying to get to show a weak hand with diamonds. Um, also by bidding here, it shows a bit of strength and it might jam the opponents out um, from bidding. Here, it didn't quite work. So here they doubled uh, for take out of hearts and North repeated two hearts. And East here has got a great hand, but they passed. So why did they pass? Well, their whole hope on this auction is that the auction continues pass and partner doubles again, and then they get to pass the takeout double for penalties and try and penalize the opponents. Cause they've got six hearts. They, they, they think the opponents are in lots of trouble in two hearts. Uh, but here South bids three diamonds. So their hopes and dreams have are gone and partner bids four clubs, which is, I've got a really strong hand. Um, I've got a powerful hand with lots of clubs. He goes pass. Now they've passed his overcall, passed over the takeout double, and they've got ace queen of spades, the ace of hearts. They have a lot of catching up to do on this hand. So they start with four diamonds, which just says I've got a good hand and I'm interested in slam. And their partner bit signs off in five clubs. Uh, but here they push on to six clubs. And what you want to do is think, well, what sort of hand could partner have to be doubling and then bidding four clubs vulnerable against someone that hasn't bid? and they have to have a really distributional hand. They don't have any heart losers. If they think they can do that, this, this hand's worth bidding six clubs. And now South is doubles, which basically just says partner, I can get a rough. Um, so uh, they're hoping to get like the ace of hearts and a heart rough or a heart rough at the start and uh, one other trick. Unfortunately, the hearts are six, six, one. So they don't get that second heart trick there. Uh, so six clubs doubled made. At the other table, South chose an interesting response. So one heart pass, they opted for one spade. Again, not something you would commonly be uh, considering here, uh, but basically the idea is South is so weak that uh, potentially East West have a vulnerable game on and they're trying to jam them out. They also don't want to be playing in one heart. That doesn't uh, seem that appealing. So, uh, by bidding one spade, you know, if partner supports, great. We're in uh, a 4-3 fit. Fine, that might be better than uh, playing in one heart. Uh, but also it might just sow confusion and make it really hard for the opponents. So this West Hand here elected to bid three clubs, which wasn't weak, but uh, a decent hand. Um, but basically after the one spade bid, West doesn't really have any re real reason to start with a double. They're not trying to find spades anymore. At the other table, it went a heart pass and no trump, and West doubled. They've got a strong hand, but they wanted to bring spades into the picture. After the one spade bid, they don't have that inspiration anymore. So they just showed their clubs, 
and uh, there was no real reason for East West to find six clubs on this. So a uh, good swing to New Zealand here. So let's bring up the entire scorecard. So it was a close match all up, uh, 47 to 41. Lots of swings uh, in this um, this set. Uh, but yeah, interesting match. And sort of, I want to just highlight how the preemptive styles or various aggression at different vulnerabilities. So let's look at uh, all the results here. Uh, so some of the really good matches here. Uh, Egypt had a really strong win over Canada. Um, UAE beat Israel. Now, I think this uh, this sort of round uh, was really about this chase for eighth and lots of things happened that sort of threw up in the mix. So um, Israel really trying to hunt this eighth spot and having a loss to UAE uh, really dampens their chances. Australia, who is in eighth spot, had a loss to Guadeloupe, which also uh, really damages their chances, but still holding on to eighth for the moment. Uh, but Italy, coming in, they played Norway, who was in sixth, and had a very solid win over Norway. So a uh, really strong chance for Italy here. That was a great win for them. Uh, so there are the results from round 14. Let's take a look at round 15. From round number 15 here, I've got a match from Canada and Israel. And here there was lots of swings, both in the part score uh, area and also the slam area. So I figured let's look at the exciting stuff. Look at the slams. Uh, now there's lots of uh, artificial bids that I don't have the full definition of. So I can't give you great detail in the uh, what all the bids mean. Um, but I'll, I'll try and talk you through what I, I think is going on here. Um, but this one, they got to six spades and played it redoubled. You don't often get to see redoubled contracts, especially at high stakes like this. Uh, anyway, uh, two hearts here um, opening, and East just started with a double, and West jumped to four spades, and now East made a slam try with five hearts. And West really liked their hand. They've got a void club, and they've got good shape, and they know they don't have too many heart losers, so they were happy to cooperate. And uh, East got two six spades and South elected to double this. Um, now, double would usually say that I think I'm getting a rough, but I think South just uh, was like, well, I got the ace king of clubs. Where are they possibly going? Because they don't actually know their partner's got a side six card club suit. Um, uh, but six spades made pretty handily here um, and redoubled as well. At the other table, they also got there, uh, this time without a two heart bid uh, just a diamond pass a spade north now bid two diamonds uh, michael's showing hearts and clubs uh, east jumped to four spades and west thinking that they've got a fair bit extra even over the five club bid their void clubs great king queen of diamonds are great uh, elected to bid six spades this time south didn't think that their ace king of clubs was going to be that good on defense uh, so just passed so handy uh, swing to israel there the next slam board that I wanted to uh, talk about uh, here, uh, we've got North South at this table is playing a different system to uh, North South at the other table. Uh, here it went one club opening and it went one diamond showing hearts, a transfer. Uh, they continue with spades, two no trump invitational, uh, three diamonds sort of rounding out a uh, shape, probably a three suited hand. Um, not necessarily like a triple four one or five four three one, I guess. Um, like they could have just three diamonds is my guess at how they play. Um, East now bid three hearts, three spades, and now they said, "All right, we don't have a heart stopper. Let's try a uh, slam in diamonds or at least game." We went four diamonds and North bid five diamonds. Now six diamonds is a pretty good contract here. Um, but. Uh, North South didn't quite get there. And I feel like maybe they went astray just a little bit in this three heart, three spade area. Um, if South knows that North has a shortage in hearts, their hand's fantastic. Like they really don't need much from their partner um, to be making slam. But the other thing that they're not totally sure about is how strong they are. So here, uh, North opened, but it's not clear where along the way they actually showed extra strength here. It looks like, hey, I was just trying to round out my shape and now let's just play five diamonds. So I think there's two hurdles to overcome in this auction. Firstly, 
uh, highlighting that they've got this shortage in hearts and that even though you've got five, you've got no points there. So maybe slam and diamonds could be a, um, a go. Um, the other thing is highlighting your extra points. Now at the other table, they're actually playing strong club. So this one club opening already highlighted the 16 plus points. Now South said I've got hearts and uh, I think most of this is natural-ish, but I'm not uh, totally sure. Uh, four spades uh, won't be natural, uh, but they agreed diamonds at some point. And then they've managed to clearly highlight that North has a shortage in hearts, but also with their opening bit of one club, they've illustrated that they've got 16 points. So they've managed to overcome both hurdles and now South and North can have a good idea that six diamonds is actually making on this hand. Um, so I reckon there's an interesting one uh, in the play here. Uh, they just lead a spade. You're, you're going to lose a heart. You have to deal with these clubs and spades. Um, you might need to take a club finesse or you could try trumping two clubs and a spade, but that would make uh, drawing trumps a bit hard. So they just start off with a heart and they continue with a spade here. And they're actually uh, just trying to set up the hearts here. They rough uh, one heart back down to the ace of clubs and rough again. So when hearts were four, three, their long heart actually comes good. Um, so here they've got the king of clubs. They still need to rough one more heart. So they need diamonds to break at this stage. So they're king of clubs and rough here. And then they've roughed the final one high. So uh, the south hand is now all good. They just have to navigate drawing trumps. So they play the ace of spades and they get to throw their winning heart away after this, but no one can trump. And now they've got the king of diamonds and ace jack third. So awkward one for actually untangling the uh, play there. So it's not just a straightforward slam that's just like easy to be in and uh, makes, but overall I think it's pretty reasonable. A few, few challenges there, but worthwhile being in. Um, so good swing back to Canada. Uh, the final board, uh, another slam. Uh, so there was heaps of slams in these 16 boards. Here, West opened two diamonds, um, showing weak in either hearts or spades. So a weak two in either hearts or a weak two in either spades. And North doubled. This is usually just values. Uh, East bid two hearts, pass or correct, and South jumped to uh, three no trumps. North feels like they've got um, a bunch of extras with their 19 points, lots of aces and kings, great intermediates here, and just jump to six no trumps, uh, which uh, six no trumps is a great contract, uh, needs just clubs breaking three two. So here we get a heart lead and they win, and they just play the ace of clubs, they test diamonds, and then they go back to clubs. Uh, if West played a low club, they will probably be putting in the 10 at this stage just to protect against a 4-1 break with West having four clubs. Yeah, they get to win the king and just give up a club. And now they've got two spades, they've got the king of hearts, their diamonds are winners, and their clubs are winner uh, for 12 tricks. So uh, lots of uh, slams here. Uh, there are also heaps of part score swings. Um, Israel won uh, 58 to 23. There's lots of times where Canada just trad game going down, going down, going down, and Israel were just picking up uh, some handy swings here. Uh, Canada did get some back here, um, but uh, yeah, some interesting uh, slam decisions in that one. So uh, let's check out all the uh, results from round number 15. Uh, so here, New Zealand versus Netherlands. Netherlands were on the top of the ladder and New Zealand got a 20-0 win. That was a just huge win and really helps their chances in the uh, race for eighth that's uh, happening. Uh, also, uh, USA won solidly in that race as well. Big win as well. Everyone around there is trying real hard. Israel had a uh, good win over Canada and Italy also had a big win over um, India there. So Italy, USA won, Israel and New Zealand, four of those five had big wins. Australia also had a win over Sweden. So solid results. All those teams in the uh, sort of race for eighth are all doing, showing uh, a good result there. So let's move into round number 16. All right, so for round 16 here, I've got an interesting match between Netherlands and Norway. And this one 
there were just so many doubles about, and I just wanted to highlight all these different options that happen. Uh, so this one, uh, north south here have a relatively routine auction uh, to four hearts. Uh, so south opens two no, and north transfers to hearts. And east actually made a double here, which was just lead directing, saying I had diamonds. South bid three hearts, and now west came in with three spades. Why would they do that? Well, they've actually got some good tolerance for diamonds. So even if spades isn't a sensible spot to play, uh, they know that they can always run to four diamonds and they're not vulnerable versus vulnerable. So it's rather safe for them just to see if they can find partner with some good spades along the way in case they want to sacrifice over uh, four hearts. But partner has no interest here. So they uh, settle in four heart. At the other table though, uh, they opened one club and over one club, they got to bid two spades and North just makes a takeout double. And here South, uh, flat hand, but really good spades elected to try and penalize them. Now they do beat three spades, three tricks, but that was only uh, plus 500 against their 620 for bidding and making uh, four hearts at the other table. Uh, so that was uh, the first interesting one that I actually wanted to bring up. Uh, the next one, was a bit of a high level decision. So uh, here, East West had an uninterrupted auction and they got to show lots of information. So they're opening two clubs, which is precision style, six or more clubs and uh, sort of 10 to 15 points. And then they say, do you have a major? And they said, yep, I've got spades. And they're like, okay, I've got game forcing strength. Can you show me what sort of hand shape you got? And they get to say, I have four spades, three hearts, a void diamond and six clubs. And now they've showing some interest, uh, South cooperated a bit and then five spades. And that's where the auction ended. Now here, they, you do have to be a little bit careful in uh, five spades because you've got uh, your two aces to lose. But also after that, you've got this 10 card fit in spades. And usually if spades are... 2-1, doesn't matter, you can take your ace and king, but when they're 3-0, you have to be careful that you take the correct card first. Do you take the ace first, expecting north to have three, or do you take the king first, expecting south to have three? Well, uh, here you want to look at what the opponents are doing and trying to work out who might have three. So here against this, uh, south starts with the ace of hearts, and then after looking at that dummy, they choose to take the ace of clubs. And one question you might be asking yourself is, well, why is South just taking their aces? Is that what you'd do if you had a void? Or is that what you'd do if maybe you thought you had um, three tricks and just wanted to make sure your two aces stood up and that maybe you score your queen? So I think it's more likely that South would be doing this uh, with um, the queen of spades, but it's not it's not certain that there's sort of reasons both ways. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about uh, what do you think uh, taking the aces means? So here they take the king of spades and now they can claim. At the other table, uh, here it went one club. Uh, so north pass went one club, pass one spade. And now north bids two clubs, Michaels, um, showing hearts and diamonds, the two unbid suits. Uh, East jumped to three diamonds, which showed shortage, and South bid uh, four hearts. West bid five diamonds, a slam try of sorts. And North, with their extra shape, uh, just pushed on to five hearts, which uh, East just doubled, rather than just bidding five over five. So once the opponents are at the five level, usually you're relatively happy to leave them there. Now, North did do it over the five diamond bid, but this was a, a slam try. Um, I guess they are also just taking away a little bit of room from the opponents. Um, and here, uh, five hearts actually plays remarkably well. Um, you lose the ace king of diamonds and uh, you could suffer a diamond rough. Um, but outside of that, there's not too many losers. So uh, the king of hearts is well placed for them. They get that rough. Uh, after this, they just trump a spade and now get to finesse the heart and then get out for down one. So good score for North South here. The next board had so many doubles and redoubles. So uh, here's the first auction. <laughs> uh, South gets to open one spade and West has 17 points and elected to start with a double. Um, 
one no trump would be my choice here i'm not sure if they play one no trump as something artificial anyway so i went one spade double and north uh redoubled here just showing some good values uh east doesn't have any preference here between clubs and diamonds so uh, they just passed and that's just what this says it's not that they're trying to penalize one spade south passed and now west bid one no trump and this got doubled and he spit redoubled saying, partner, let's take it out. Please choose something. And they choose two clubs and that gets doubled. So that was the first auction. Uh, this actually went three down. They chose, like they don't have anywhere good to run. They've got a four, three fit, but they chose the suit that broke five, one. At the other table that went one spade, they overcalled a no trump. And now it went penalty double. And here redouble uh, presumably for rescue. I went pass and West just ran to two clubs. So I went pass, pass and South doubled. And now West redoubled saying, hey, save me out of two clubs. I don't really like it here. And I went pass and the only spot that East could see to run was two diamonds and that got doubled as well. But they luckily chose the suit that broke for them. So they chose the suit that had a 3-3 three, three break rather than a 5-1 break. So even though their diamonds are worse, two diamonds actually played a trick better and got out for two diamonds doubled down two. Uh, so lots of doubles, lots of redoubles and trying to fi find a safe place to play. Didn't find a great place, but probably the best that they could do. Uh, so here's the full scorecard. Um, Netherlands small win over Norway, 21 to 16. Uh, so let's bring up the uh, full scores from all right, so some of the big results from this were Italy had a big win over Uruguay, so they've actually pushed all the way up into seventh, so great day for Italy today. Uh, India had a big win over New Zealand, so uh, New Zealand were really trying to catch this sort of eighth spot. India is not far behind, but uh, that put a dampen on uh, New Zealand's day. And then USA won, had a big win over Australia. So USA won's up in the eighth and Australia's fallen back a bit. Um, so there were some of the big results from uh, round number 16. So Italy having a fantastic day today. Also Switzerland's taken the lead with 234 with USA 2 closely behind. And Netherlands uh, in third, comfortably third, but a bit distant from... Uh, first and second there. Uh, let's take a look at the results from the other sections. So in the Wuhan Cup, the mixed uh, field, uh, France has a very commanding lead at this stage um, with uh, 19 VPs clear of second, which is Italy and then Romania third. And then rounding out the top eight is USA one, Poland, Belgium, Germany, and Latvia. In the uh, Diorsi trophy, the seniors, USA one, Pretty commanding lead by 13 VPs in first spot over Poland and Denmark in third. Uh, who are, Those top three are very solid there. Um, and then after that is France, Turkey, Sweden, England, and USA too. And in the Venice Cup, the women's field, Poland absolutely dominating. 25 VPs clear of second. That is massive. England in second, Denmark third, and then Turkey, Italy, Sweden, Norway, and USA two rounding up the top eight. Anyway, uh, that's all the news from day five of the World Championships. Thanks all for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.